Hi everyone, welcome to the virtual open day for Deakin Optometry. James Armitage is my name. I'm the optometry course director and um, I'm really thrilled to have you here to explore the optometry course. Um, we'll be having a live Q&A session that will follow this information session immediately. So um, start writing your questions in the panel on the right hand side of your screen and these will to be responded to during the live Q&A session. I live and work and play and learn and teach on the country that is traditionally owned by the Wathaurong people. And for 60,000 years, the Wathaurong people have gathered in these lands to tell their stories and pass knowledge from one generation to the next. And I'm eternally grateful that the elders past and present have allowed us to gather on these lands as well to share our stories to pass on information from our generation to the next. I'd like to extend um, my respect to any Indigenous First Nations people who may be joining us either uh, virtually or on the live chat. So let's talk about optometry, um, why optometry may be a, a good career, what we do, um, what makes our course unique and how we really work towards making you work ready um, We'll talk about the course structure, um, where you'll be learning and um, get some comments from some of our graduates as well. Finally, we'll talk about some of the entry streams that um, allow you into this course. So I guess one of the things I always ask people is, what, what do you want from a career? You know, um, if you're or um, just coming out of school, then you're about 18, 19 years of age and you have about 50 years of work ahead of you. And so what does that career look like? Do, do you think you'll be in the same career all your life? Do you think you'll move? It doesn't really matter. Um, really what we want you to do is to think about what that ideal career offers you now. Is it about employment? Is it about money? Is it about flexibility in working? Um, is it that get, some people really want to be their own boss to run the show and others don't really want to take on that leadership role. They're really happy to work in a larger team um, and contribute to that team. Most people who are working in health probably want to you know, enjoy that privilege of helping others and being active in a clinical discipline. Um, there are opportunities to travel in some business in, and not in others. Um, and again, some people really like to think about the health focus, but others um, are more interested in business and um, looking at the nexus of health and business. So I think this is where optometry is a really great career. Um, we've got nearly 100% employment. In fact, it's about 97% of our graduates are employed immediately after graduation. And the 3% who aren't um, immediately employed, it's not because there's not a job available to them. It's that they um, haven't found the job that they're looking for or they're um, looking at other study or, or other activities as well as work. Um, money is um, important. It's what puts food on the table and, and keeps the world going around. It's not the most important thing for a lot of us, um, but financial um, remuneration from optometry is pretty good. There's flexibility in working hours. And if you want to run your own practice, you can run your own practice. If you want to be in part of a group practice, you can absolutely do that as well. And optometry is a, a really important health profession and um, it is a privilege to help others. It can be a really challenging clinical discipline. And depending on the mode of um, practice you use, if you start working locum, there can be great opportunities to travel all around Australia and um, you are eligible to um, apply for registration uh, in the United Kingdom. Also, you can travel to New Zealand. And there is this combination between business and uh, health if, if you wanted to focus on that nexus as well. So broadly, optometrists assess the function of the eyes and the visual system and they monitor eye health. Um, I guess most people know us as the people who provide glasses or contact lenses and correct the visual function. 
but it's a lot more than that. There's functional vision assessment. There's the pharmacological and therapeutic aspects of, of managing diseases. And we work in uh, multidisciplinary teams with GPs and ophthalmologists and orthoptists. So there's the opportunity to teach and learn um, different from, from other professions as well. So we think that um, you are actually what makes the optometry program at Deakin unique. And, and I say that because what we've tried to do is tailor a learning environment that allows everybody to take what they need to out of the course. Um, we use a lot of really cutting edge techniques and educational philosophies and, and practices to try and allow you to work out what it is that you need to focus on within your course, um, what you're good at, you might spend a little bit less time on, uh, and what you find a little bit harder, you might spend a bit of more time I'm on, but we have a very flexible and adaptive teaching and learning system to allow you to tailor a course that fits your needs and, of course, allows you to be um, registered as an optometrist because you meet the entry criteria that are set out um, by Optometry Australia and the Optometry Registration Board. So we were Australia's first accelerated optometry course. Um, the way you study optometry at Deakin is you commence your studies in trimester one of year one, and you do 10 consecutive trimesters, which are the Bachelor of Vision Science and Master of Optometry uh, over three and a half years. So the five-year degree at any other university or the three-year undergrad plus four-year uh, optometry degree um, in some Australian universities takes three and a half years at Deakin. You do this by working over the summer. And um, if you're looking to um, spend the summer on the beach um, and um, you're happy to take um, seven or five years, then um, that's one way to do it. We, as I said, we think that um, it's really nice to be able to continue your studies. And rather than forgetting what you learned by November, by the time you come back in March, um, you've forgotten stuff. So you've got to spend time coming back up to speed. Um, here you learn in a really um, linear and um, spiraling curriculum fashion. So we keep building on your knowledge over that three and a half years. And we do this via a really innovative method called problem-based learning, which is um, pretty much standard for all the modern medical teaching programs. Um, you, you learn all the aspects of optometry you need by studying real life case presentations. We really do put a focus on you being work ready so that when you come out of this course, um, you feel ready to practice as an optometrist. So the educational philosophy, the preclinical training, the clinical training, and an emphasis on dispensing optics is all part of what makes you ready to be a, a work ready optometrist, both inside the consulting room, but also as part of a really important member of the practice. Part of this, and, and a really big part of this, is that there are lots and lots of placements. So you spend lots of time in optometry practices, observing optometrists, providing short-term uh, care in, in short-term placements of a day or a couple of days. And then there's a long-term six-month placement where you're placed in a practice and you really get to embed yourself into um, the life of a working optometrist. So the course structure, again, is, is a little bit different to perhaps um, some of the other um, programs. In the first year, we spend a lot of time on fundamentals. So in that time, you'll be doing um, health literacy, health information, optics, cell biology, ocular anatomy and, and physiology, chemistry, uh, science of vision, the business of optometry, and um, basic um, accounting so that you're really ready to, in years two and three, focus on the problem-based learning aspects of the course. And in year two and year three, the PBL, we match on one side the vision science and the other side all the technical and clinical optometric skills. 
And that happens for five trimesters in a row. And then, as I said, you spend the last six months out in one of two placements, either two rural placements or one metro and one rural placement. So you will spend um, at least three months out in a rural location embedded in optometry practice. It may be two, um, two three-month placements in rural optometry. So the facilities are really fantastic. We've got um, a brand new building. When we moved into the, the building in 2013, it was purpose built for optometry. And since then we've been making refinements. So there's an inbuilt clinic on campus where you first start to practice optometry by seeing your colleagues and, and fellow students, but then you um, start moving to seeing real life patients who come into these clinics um, and provide care under supervision, of course. Um, but the PBL facilities, the clinical field skills facilities, and, and all of the clinical facilities are um, constantly being upgraded. And as I said, you're, you're based in, in the one hub at the Warren Ponds campus. There are supports for those who need it. There are scholarships. Um, and there are financial support as well. And I'd encourage you to, to look at the fees and the scholarships part of the um, website because there are a number of support structures for you. So our graduates um, ha have constantly been giving us feedback. We're a small course. And so we have really good contact with both our students and our graduates. Um, the graduates are really focused on saying that the clinical placement was a really strong aspect of their professional development. Um, it's been noted that if you're on um, Oz study or you come from a socioeconomic background, that means you have to work during your course, um, then the three and a half year program is a lot faster and you're out earning money rather than spending five years or seven years um, doing the optometry degree. So you do your study and then you're ready to go um, in three and a half years supporting yourself again. And the combination of teaching methods, the PBL, the TBL, work really well um, to then transition into the clinical placement. All Deakin students um, are really, we, we focus as a university on making sure that you have a great experience at university that improves your chance of a, a good graduate learning outcome. Um, but optometry in particular is very strong. As I said, we have about a 97% graduation uh, of work, people in employment within um, the first three months of, of finishing. Most of our students, in fact, are organising their job contracts while they're out on placement in the last three months of their optometry degree. And as soon as you finish this course, you can apply for registration to practice as an optometrist and the course is fully accredited. And you can work in both Australia and New Zealand uh, as a Medicare provider of optometric services. It's expected that most people who are doing this course probably do want to um, be clinical optometrists. And of course, um, that's, you know, what we expect most of our students to do. But you don't just have to work in a clinic. Um, you can work within uh, non-government institutions and organisations, either providing optometry services or um, working with other health professionals. People work within private practice. We have people who've gone on to do PhDs and are working in a research environment. Um, there's also the opportunity to work at state, local and federal government um, levels to improve eye health or use the health information and public health training that you get during this course um, to, to look at public health intervention systems. Many of our students work in um, private practice clinics, um, but a lot also in um, corporate and community settings. And if you, as I said, if you want to um, own a practice, um, there's many of our students are now um, partners either in um, large 
optometric chains or in their own private practice. Um, usually within a few years, you usually would go and work for someone for a few years and then um, look at owning the, working out the private practice model that, that suits you. As I said, a number of our students work in public eye care facilities as well, and also in research. And as an optometrist, a lot of what we do is um, primary eye health and primary eye care. So um, it's seeing like your GP for primary health care. Um, you see everything that comes in through the door, but there's also um, recognised areas of special interest within optometry, including myopia control and dry eye management, low vision, paediatric vision as well. It's projected that up the need for optometrists and orthoptists will increase um, by about 15% over the next four years. Um, that's from um, Australian Commonwealth Government data. It's not all in metro areas. There is a, a real focus on rural and regional need as well. And our course has a, a very large focus on making sure that you are ready to work in a metro area, in a um, outer metro area, or in rural and remote areas of Australia. Um, there is a complete shortage of remote workforce and a, a very low um, amount of optometrists working within regional Australia. And there's an opportunity for us to work to increase eye health um, of not just metro living Australians, but also those in regional rural areas. Um, <clears throat> so there's, there's a, a rural entry scheme that we set up several years ago. So if you um, live and go to school in a non-metropolitan area, please go to um, the regional and rural entry scheme, um, which is on the website there, and have a look at whether you are eligible to enter the, the course via that rural and regional entry stream. So in a nutshell, um, you need to be currently in um, year 12 and your year 12 school needs to be located in an area that is defined by the Australian Bureau of Statistics as um, not in a rural or not in a major centre of Australia. It used to be RA2 um, was the... Was the um, uh, the, the way it was defined. We're based in Geelong. Um, and so current students with the, that are doing school within the city of Greater Geelong are also able to apply through the regional and remote entry scheme. So as I said, please go to the website and have a look at the eligibility criteria there. There's also a real need for us to improve the eye health of Indigenous Australians. And part of that is to make sure that we have an Indigenous optometric workforce who can provide that care um, that is culturally safe and appropriate and to engage with communities um, to allow um, a really fruitful uh, interaction between Indigenous uh, communities and optometry. And part of what we'd like to do in, in addition to um, increasing cultural safety training within our course for non-Indigenous students. Um, we're really keen to attract Indigenous students to the, the course. So again, if you are um, an Indigenous student or potentially um, a student who is Indigenous who would like to study optometry, um, there is a regional, uh, there's an Indigenous entry stream. And I encourage you to jump on the website and have a look at the Indigenous Entry Stream. If you are interested in this, please um, get in touch with us. You've got my email address there and, and I can put you in touch with our Indigenous Health Team who can support um, the, uh, you through the application process. It has a slightly different um, in a time that the um, admissions need to be done by. So it's by the end of the day on the 30th of September. So it's um, not through VTAC. So if you want to get into optometry, um, 
usually the ATAR is around that 95 mark. Um, the rural and regional entry stream is about the 90 mark. You will have one prerequisite, which is that you need to have passed um, the VCE units three and four with a study score of at least 25 in English. And if you've done English as another language, um, you need a study score of at least 30 in EAL. All other prerequisites, um, there are no other prerequisites, we'll teach you everything else you need to know. And this is the same um, whether you're a school leaver or a non-school leaver. There are a number of entry streams and often um, if you're a non-school leaver, it may be in your interest to apply through our direct entry portal. And you can see there what the um, requirements are for entry via the um, non-school leaver program. For international students, um, there's a requirement for an IELTS score of seven with no band less than seven. Um, there are also IELTS equivalents. The reason for this is that IELTS score of seven is what is required of students to register as an optometrist. Um, and so we've matched the entry requirements into the course with um, the graduate uh, registration requirements. So if you're international, um, please apply through the international uh, VTAC portal. Um, and you can see there the, the, the website there um, that'll allow you to get in touch with the Deakin International team. So thanks for joining us. I think um, the, the best chance that you have to understand the optometry program is to write your questions in there and um, we'll have a, a conversation. It's good to see that so many of you are interested in optometry um, and there are lots of resources across um, this page and across the Open Day website that'll tell you about not just optometry, but about Deakin as well. But most important, please stick around for that Q and A session because that's the chance for you to ask all the questions um, that may have cropped up while you've been listening to this presentation. Again, if you haven't put your questions in already, you can do so by um, clicking on that panel on the right hand side of your screen. Um, and our campus open days are finally back in August, so um, don't miss your chance to get um, in on site and have a look at our. Um, facilities for yourself rather than just uh, through a computer. So I hope you found this session useful and I hope that you'll enjoy the rest of your virtual day experience. And I'd really do hope that I can welcome um, a number of you to Deakin Optometry in 2023. Thanks a lot for your time. See you later. Hello and welcome to the Optometry Live Q&A session. I'm Ryan Wood Bradley, a lecturer in vision science here within the Deakin Optometry Program. And today I'm joined by our presenters, Associate Professor Heather Connor and Professor James Armitage, as well as one of our third year students, Keely Rankin. If you'd like to ask a question, please type your question into the Q&A section in the question panel on this page. We will do our best to respond to all of your questions during this session. If you have any unanswered questions at the end of the session, our team of experts will be available on web chat all day to assist with any questions, including any specific international student related admission or fee queries. At the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you will notice a yellow chat now icon. Please click on, click on this after the session to be connected with our team. So to kick us off, we have our first question and I might get um, Heather Connor to answer this question. And this is questions from Mel. What are the industry partners or place, placements that occur with this course? Thanks, Ryan, and thanks, Mel. That's a great question. So there's a number of different placements in the course. Throughout the sort of second and third year, there's placements in with local optometrists. There's also placements within ophthalmology and at Barron Health and at Lorne Hospital. So those are placements where you get to observe and to some extent also take part in some consultations. We also have a number of placements at the Australian College of Optometry, which is a public clinic located in Carlton, and you'll spend quite a bit of time in your third year seeing patients at the College of Optometry. And then the final six months of the course are spent out in practice, 
We usually try and get you to do three months in metro and three months in a regional or rural location. And the, we have all industry partners there. So all the big names, Specsavers and OPSM, but also with some of the smaller groups and um, the independent optometrists as well. So you get a chance to experience a number of different types of optometry, how it works within the system, the health system, and also in private practice. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Heather. Um, Keely, would you like to share any of the placements that have uh, stood out to you as you've gone through the course? Yes, so I think Heather covered it largely, but to me, at, from a student perspective, my favourite placement, I think, um, has probably either been at the Australian College of Optometry, and that's consulting patients from your third year onwards. So it's very hands-on, but it's also very well supported in terms of having everything double-checked. So if you're still lacking a little bit of confidence, um, there's lots of support there for you. So that's probably my favourite. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Keely. We have another question from Jesse, and I'll pass this one on to James. What campuses is optometry offered at and what facilities are available? So optometry is based at our Warm Ponds campus um, on Wanarong country. And um, you will spend at least um, for the first three and a half or three years of your three and a half years, you'll spend most days of the week. I think it's between three and four days a week uh, on campus. Um, so in terms of facilities, we've got um, our own floor of a, a relatively new, it was a purpose built um, building. I say relatively new because it was brand new when we first moved in, but it's um, now about eight to 10 years old. Um, but it's a beautiful building. There's fantastic clinical skills facilities, private study areas, um, and there's a, um, a, a live working clinic also incorporated within our facilities. As Heather mentioned, we also have a pre-clinical area at the Australian College of Optometry. So I think um, there's there's plenty of space um, for teaching and learning. And again, Keely, do you want to um, weigh in and talk about what you think the facilities are like? Absolutely. So I think that for me, it was really surprising coming to uni and seeing like the huge amount of equipment that we actually have. Um, and when you're in practical classes and everything, there's always more than enough equipment to go around. And it's it's so, there's so much just ready readily accessible at your hands. And then also just to add on to that, there are PBL rooms as well where you're able to kind of come in in your own time and practice with that equipment that you might not have the access to at home. So that's, I found that to be a really, really beneficial component of developing my clinical skills as well. Thank you. Thanks, Keely. So this is another question for James, I think. And this question is from Annika. What subjects would you recommend studying in VC if you're interested in studying in optometry? So we very, very deliberately decided that we don't want to set prerequisites other than English, which is a prerequisite um, and it's a prerequisite for your VCE. Um, there are no compulsory subjects that you have to do. Um, but the reason we chose that is that we've built a course that will teach you everything you do need to know from the sciences, communication, uh, finance, and the optometry specific material. Um, I guess, and again, I'll get Keely to weigh in at some stage, I guess having a science background would be beneficial in terms of not having to learn stuff um, new, but please don't feel that you have to do physics if physics isn't your strong suit. Um, do what you're good at, do what you love, and do what's going to get you the, you know, the highest ATAR, because that is for a year 12, that's the primary um, you know, selection metric. So do what you love and do what you can do well. I so might jump in there. Go for it. I, so I had a very different uh, entourage of subjects going into uh, optometry at Deakin. So I actually studied majority business subjects like accounting and also did psychology for the maths um, in year 12. So I didn't have that stereotypical science background coming into the course. And although it might have felt like things were a little bit more challenging, all of the support systems available to you in first year really help you to build a good science foundation for when you do go on to learn the specific content in second year. So if you don't enjoy doing those science subjects, don't put yourself through them in year 12. And it also gives you a little bit more breadth when you do come to uni and you have a bit of a business background, I think, because a lot of your other faculty members might not have that. I mean, cohort members may not have that. So it kind of gives you a point of difference, which I found really interesting. 
Thanks, Gilly. Yeah, so the um, answer is do what you're good at. So we have another question from Henry, and I'll pass this one to James. Um, are there career advancement options through further study? And do students also choose to go on and do research in this area? Yeah, so there absolutely are. Um, I think optometry is a, a profession that has changed significantly in the last 15 to 20 years. Certainly since I graduated, there's been really big advances. There are lots of postgraduate uh, courses either run through professional bodies or through other universities and research is absolutely uh, an option. So I'm an optometrist who went on to a research career. Heather's an optometrist who went on to research. Um, and we have at the moment um, either at Deakin or other institutions, we probably have 10 or 10 or so of our students who are doing um, you know, research careers either by doing a PhD um, or that they've joined research groups um, in universities and um, institutes around Australia. And this question's for Keely. What's your favourite part of studying optometry at Deakin? Yeah, so I think that there's a lot of things. For me, I come from a rural location, so the Warren Ponds campus is really nice. It's kind of, you get a little bit of a city vibe with Geelong, but it's very laid back. And then in terms of optometry specifically, the cohort is quite small. So you know everybody, it's very comfortable and you can always go and ask your tutors or your peers for support. And it's not the kind of degree where you're not going to get a response by email. Um, people are very readily accessible for you to receive support and feedback um, on anything that you might need help with. So those are probably my favorite things. Thanks, Keely. I might get Heather to answer this question, but James, you might want to add to it as well. Um, what are the study abroad opportunities with this degree? Are you able to complete a semester overseas? Thanks, Ryan. So we don't actually have um, a, any good way in which you can do a full semester. It's actually trimesters that we have. We don't have any way of doing that completely overseas at the moment. And with the, the recent pandemic, obviously, that's actually meant it's been very difficult to organize anything overseas. However, we do have a virtual placement where you work through cases with students in India. At the moment, that's with Shankaratralia Hospital in Chennai and also with a hospital in Siliguri, which is uh, up in the north of India. And we're uh, hoping to bring online um, a hospital and a university in um, Malawi. Malawi. Yeah, I just couldn't think of the name. Uh, and we also have um, a virtual placement with New Zealand. The hope is, and James can probably talk more on this, to actually have placements which are um, a couple of weeks overseas, but just at the moment with the pandemic, that hasn't been possible. Yeah, so um, in the last uh, three years, we've had continuous funding through the new Colombo plan to send our students to India. Obviously, again, yeah, no travel has been um, possible, but as soon as um, we're able to get students over um, to India safely, and um, that will probably be next year, we'll start that program again. Um, the other thing is that we have had students doing placements in New Zealand um, over previous and prior to COVID. Um, again, I think that COVID disruptions meant that a lot of universities uh, are just holding back a little bit because it's very disruptive for you when things go wrong. The other thing I'd say is that whilst international placements are fantastic, um, and they and I did an international placement in Zimbabwe um, when I was training, depending on where you go, um, it may be all very observational and therefore, um, you know, whilst it's an excellent experience to go overseas, um, it's really important that you train to be an optometrist who can work in Australia and New Zealand because that's where um, all Australian degrees allow you to work. So it's around keeping local context um, and you'll certainly get enough adventure if that's what you want by moving to some of the more remote placement areas. So we've had students who've had absolutely brilliant um, remote and, and rural and remote placements where they've travelled to Indigenous communities, they've gone on eye camps and they've had um, a really adventurous time um, right here in Australia. Thanks very much, James. Um, and just a reminder to those that are watching, we really do appreciate all the questions that are coming through. So make sure you put your question into the question panel on this page uh, so that we can get around to answering your questions because we're keen to answer them all. 
Um, so we have another question here, and I'll probably give this one to James as well. Um, can you study the course part time? And if so, how long will it take? Uh, so you, you, this is a full time course. Um, again, the way this course was designed is that it's a 10 period or we use trimesters, but um, semester course. Um, that would normally take you five years at a um, at a university that does two periods per year. Here you'll do it in um, three consecutive um, trimesters per year, so you'll get your ten um, trimesters done in three and a half years. Uh, th there is no part time option, um, no official part time option. First year can be done part time um, because there's no um, strong links between subjects but as you move into second year and beyond there's an absolute requirement to be doing a full-time load um, and if you take a year off you know, if you take a trimester off you can't do that for another year um, by which time you've lost a lot of the knowledge and skills that you have developed so I think um, apart from first year where you may be able to do some part-time study um, and for those of you who've studied elsewhere, um, first year may be a little bit part-time because you'll get credit for prior learning where that's appropriate. After second year, from second year onwards, it's absolutely full-time. And do you want to tell us how, you know, how, how would you say full-time means, Keely? Yeah, so full-time is definitely full-time and especially with the three trimester system. So you are at uni uh, more time of the year than you're not, as opposed to some, if you're only taking the two trimesters or semesters a year. But in saying that, it's definitely preparing you for entering the workforce and it still is more relaxed. You'll come home from placements and think, wow, uni isn't as bad as I thought it was. Um, and I think that as long as you're really passionate about it, it definitely doesn't feel like you're doing a full time course. So with all of the it's very broken up, well broken up with clinical skills um, and PBL. So it doesn't really feel like you're just watching lectures full time. It's a lot different than a lot of other degrees. So. I don't think it's that bad. We should probably explain that PBL is problem based learning, which is, is how we run a lot of our course and um, we abbreviate that to, to PBL. So as Keely mentioned before, there's the this rooms dedicated for that, that you can also use to practice clinical skills. But um, that's just one of the ways that we actually teach. Thank you. Uh, and another question for James. How big is the optometry cohort and how many contact hours are there per week? Uh, so typically, I think our years are about around 80 per um, 80 something per year is our steady state of student numbers. Um, and in first year, I think you'll be contact hours will be around 20 um, per per week. Um, from third or from second year onwards, you're looking at um, pretty much a full Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, half day Friday of, of lectures or tutorials or classes or placements. Um, and often Tuesday um, is a day of private study in second year, but it may also be a placement day. So I would bank on nine to five, five days a week as your um, as your uni time. However, as I said, we do um, provide a lot of our lectures recorded um, and we do try and make sure that there are periods of time, so half days or full days. So for those of you who do need to work, there's absolutely an opportunity to continue doing some part-time work if you need that, you know, to support yourself. And I think I, I don't know, Keely, is it about 30 to 40% of the cohort would, would do some sort of part-time work? Yeah, potentially even more. And a lot of that is in dispensing. So you're kind of solidifying things that you're learning alongside um, yeah. alongside that. Yeah, so a lot of our students work in optometry practices. So they're, yeah, they're, they're getting a little bit of reinforcement along the way. Yeah, so despite their contact hours being quite high, a lot of students still manage to hold down a part-time job Absolutely. getting industry experience. Yeah, and we, we've deliberately made the timetable um, allowing those big periods of time so people can do that because we understand you need to work sometimes or and you want to work sometimes. Okay, um, this might be a question for you, Heather. Uh, there's a couple of questions in here so you can break it down however you would like. 
is there a saturation of optometrists in the market or are there lots of jobs available for graduates? And what percentage of graduates get jobs in rural area areas and metro areas? Right. OK, so I will break that down a bit. Um, there currently isn't a saturation of optometrists in the market, particularly if you want to work in a more regional or rural area. So there's plenty of opportunities uh, in more regional areas. There's also a lot of opportunities if you want to head um, to, to sort of more um, Northern Territory, West Australia. So areas where there isn't currently uh, a school providing optometrists, although there will be soon in WA, but it's really just that in any of those areas, there's definitely areas, there's definitely jobs available for optometrists. And even in the cities, there are still jobs available, but there's that's probably where it's hard, a little bit more difficult to get a job um, unless you want to work for one of the big corporates. In terms of the percentages of, of graduates who get jobs in rural and metro areas, we don't really have access to that information. Um, from sort of generally talking to students, I'd say it's probably around about 30 to 40 percent who actually end up in a more rural area at the moment. But that's probably likely to vary and just depend on, on where jobs are available. I don't know if you've heard any more about that, Keely or, or James. You might have heard some feedback. Uh, so I think in terms of um, the, the, the distribution of workforce, um, there are still in, in areas around the cities, um, so some of the outer suburbs, there's still a lot of growth. Wherever there are growth areas, there's absolutely a need for optometry. Um, and also, as I said, moving out just out of those um, urban centres, so moving out of Melbourne um, and being an hour away from Melbourne, the job uh, market is a lot um it's a lot easier to find um, the work that you want. And I think that's, as, as Heather said, um, at the moment, our graduate uh, employment is, is 98 or 99%. It's very, very, very high. Um, but I guess it's around what are the job conditions that you want? Where do you want to work? What sort of um, practice do you want to work in? And certainly if you move slightly further out from a metro centre, you have a bit more variety. But having said that, um, I don't know of any optometrists who are looking for work and can't find it. I think we've graduated between six or seven cohorts now, James, and I think it's fair to say that those that <coughs> want the job get a job. Absolutely. Yep. Keely, do you know, is, is there any talk around? Um, I think for me, obviously not quite in that graduate space yet, but looking at placement providers and things like that, there are a lot of opportunities in more, a slightly more re regional areas. And when I say slightly more regional, I mean within an hour from Melbourne. And within that kind of scope, you do get a lot of say in what you want in a practice uh, as opposed to potentially in the city where it is a little bit more difficult. But if you do want a job there, you definitely can find one. Mm -hmm. But just as Heather said, it's more about um, do you want to work for an independent practice as opposed to a, a corporate practice is kind of what it comes down to. All right, thank you. Uh, so this is a question for Keely, and this is from Yana. What advice would you give to a student wanting to study this course? I think just give it your best shot. If it's something that you think that you're going to be interested in, and you clearly are because you wouldn't be here if you weren't, all just do your best in year 12 um, if you're in year 12 at the moment to get that ATAR and then I think that in first year it can be very it feels like it's a little bit non-specific for the first two trimesters but if you just give it a chance and be persistent with it it'll it gets really really interesting and then you get to start clinical skills and it doesn't feel at all like you have to go to uni it feels like oh I get to go to uni and I get to learn these really cool things and then you start on placement and it's like, wow, now I'm implementing those really cool things that I started learning. So it's a very cool course in that way that it's constant progression and it's not just lectures. So I think my advice is just give it your best shot um, if you're interested. Thanks, Keely. Um, so this question is from Mel. Uh, if you are trying to get into this course but don't get the required ATAR, are there alternative pathways to getting into this course? And um, James, do you want to handle that one? Yeah, there are lots. So if we have um, uh, the standard VTAC entry, 
we have a rural and regional entry stream. So if you're going to a school outside of the central Melbourne metro area, please apply through that one. Uh, for those who don't get in um, from the ATAR, like directly on the basis of ATAR, I would recommend that you come and do a degree, um, a health sciences degree, Bachelor of Health Science, Bachelor of Biomedical Science um, at Deakin. You'll be able to do a lot of the first year subjects that the optoms do anyway, so you're not wasting um, any time, you've just started. And um, at the end of the year, you can apply for a course transfer, typically a uh, an average score, so a WAM of greater than 70, will see you be able to transfer into optometry. Um, the other way to do it, if you didn't want to come to Deakin, you can do a course at another university um, and then apply after the first year um, on the basis of your WAM, and then you will be ranked. Um, we probably have 20 or so, 10 to 20 applications through the um, course transfer every year um, and we have um, about 200 to 250 applications through the direct entry portal each year so you can apply directly um, to us on the basis of your tertiary study and typically a WAM of, of about 75 will see you um, competitive for a place it changes every year but um, yeah so that's the, the, that's the advice I'd give you is um, do your health sciences or Bachelor of Biomedical Sciences or Science at Deakin um, and transfer across. Uh, I might get Heather to answer this question from Gina. What makes the Deakin Optometry Program unique? Okay, so I think we think there's quite a number of things that make our program unique. The first is that we do teach through problem-based learning. So you actually learn by discussing through cases with your peers, which means that it's self-directed study, but you get lots of support in that. But it's a way to actually develop the, the skills you're going to need as an optometrist, sort of how to find out what you need to know. We also have team-based learning sessions, which means, again, you get to learn with your peers and learn from each other, which is a really good way to learn. And perhaps the other big thing that makes us unique is that we do have these final six months of industry placement. And that means you really get immersed in a practice. You really get to see exactly what it's like to be an optometrist. You learn everything you really need to know about being a, a, an optometrist. And that means that when you graduate, you are really ready to go out there and work as an optometrist in the practice where you, you decide you want to go. I think those are the main things that make our program unique. Thank you. Um, this is a question for James. What percentage of non-school leavers are accepted for this course and what are their requirements? It's about, it, it, it varies every year, but it's about 60-40. So 60% are school leavers and about 40% uh, come from the, the direct entry portal and the um, course transfer portal that I talked about. Um, and what we're interested in is seeing um, a high um, level of university um, study effort. So um, as I said, that's typically a, a WAM in excess of 75. Um, and we do like to see students who are um, actively trying to get some work experience. So working it as a, as a, as a dispenser in an optometry practice, some of our direct entry um, applicants I do a certificate cert for in dispensing. Um, we like to see people who have uh, been working in rural and regional health services. So again, if you're doing, you know, if you're doing some work in in a health service, then that allows us to see that you're going to do really well in this course. So we effectively rank on a combination of your university uh, scores and any work experience, volunteer experience, and um, cognate industry experience. And again, rural and regional um, applications are really um, looked upon favourably because we're looking to make sure that the rural and regional workforce can be supplied. Thanks, James. Um, I might get Heather to answer this question. After graduating from this course, can you practice as an optometrist in other countries such as New Zealand? 
So that's yes, definitely. The course is accredited through OCANS, the Optometry Council of Australia and New Zealand. So that means that once you have the degree, you can practice in Australia or in New Zealand. If you want to practice in other countries, it really depends where you want to go. So a number of other countries have their own registration schemes. And for example, you might need to do a bridging year or a bridging course, um, depending on where you actually want to go. So with most degrees, health degrees, they're really only accredited in the country that, that they're run. So then you have to look at whatever country you're trying to go to, whether or not you would need to have, have further study or to do, a, as I said, that transition period. Um, there's other countries, if, there, if optometry isn't a, a registered profession, then obviously you can certainly go and work in those countries. Fantastic, thank you, Heather. Um, so now we have a question for, um, perhaps James again. I live in Geelong. Would I be eligible to apply through the regional and remote entry scheme? What if I am not a year 12? Can I still apply? Oh, James? I've gone on mute. Sorry, the rural and regional entry stream is just for year 12. Um, but yes, absolutely. So students from the greater Geelong area can apply. Um, and our reason for that is that we're based in Geelong and Geelong is our home. And so we want to make sure that students who are in this area can uh, apply through that stream. There's also waiting um, within that rural and regional stream. So the further you live away from a major capital city and centre, um, the more bonus points you get. So absolutely Geelong can uh, apply, but um, the further out you are, uh, the more um waiting your application gets and it is only for year 12 uh, or or year 12 within the last year so for those who might have had a gap year and not done any further study um, I believe we can also apply through that stream. So normally we will be aiming to wrap up in the next two minutes, but we have quite a few questions to get through. So we will continue um, past 10.30. Um, so with that, I've got another question here for Keely. Um, can you please tell us more about what units you're studying? Yeah, so at the moment, I'm in the master's portion of the degree. So that means that the units that we take are, it's a single unit that's four credit points. So it's just, a big unit essentially and within that you have a lot of different like forms of classes so clinical skills classes as Heather mentioned before your TBL and PBL learning opportunities and then also your typical lectures um, and then you've got assessments and things on top of that so for me at the moment it's just that the one single unit and it, I think it's called advanced optometric studies but in second year you take two separate units and they kind of split out your theoretical learning um, of optometric content as opposed to your practical learning and it kind of runs in that fashion but it all becomes integrated when you do move into that third year component of the course because that's exactly what optometrists are, deal are faced with every day so it really teaches you that clinical um decision making from second year onwards. Thanks, Keely. And a question for James. Are there any scholarships available for this course? There are scholarships. So um, I would encourage you to go to the university scholarships page. Um, and there are scholarships that you can apply for. Keely is one of our Vice Chancellor's Excellence Program Scholars. Um, and there are a number of um, access equity diversity scholarships that the university offers. Um, so I don't know, we don't have any specific optometry scholarships. Um, they're all uh, general university ones, but um, certainly if you go to the um, university page and look at scholarships, there are lots to apply for and I'd encourage you to do so. Most of our students are at the highest end of the ATAR um, scale anyway so you would you'd immediately be looking you know you'd be looking at a, um, a relatively high chance um, of being ranked highly in those scholarship rounds. Thank you. Um, so another question for you James if we are considering other optometry programs what are the best things to think about when comparing courses? Uh, I, I think you need to compare 
what how you want to learn um the the biggest difference between the universities um available in victoria is that um for deacon you'll complete you can enter from year 12 and you can complete your master of optometry degree within the three and a half years um the alternative is the university of melbourne which is a three-year bachelor program and then you apply to get into optometry after sitting the GAMSAT uh, and a four-year optometry program. So I, I guess the reason um, our course is very popular is that we do by compressing um, the amount of time you spend at university rather than compressing what we teach you, um, get you through your degree uh, in about half the time of some of the other universities. The other thing I think Heather's already talked about is we have a real focus on making sure that we're aligning everything that you learn with everything that you assess so that you always understand why you're learning and we support the theoretical learning with practical classes at the time that you learn the theory. So you're always learning theory and practice at the same time. Uh, and the other thing I think is that we've been incredibly innovative over the last 10 years that the course has been running. And um, as course director, my challenge to all of my staff is let's design the optometry program that we wish we had when we were going through. And so we're constantly working on trying to improve uh, and make it as student centred as possible. And I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in on that as well. I think there's there's lots of advantages. Um, but yeah, what do you see, Keely and Heather? For me, being a student within the degree, I actually have really enjoyed the three trimester system. I think most people move away from home, so you just develop a really good relationship with the rest of your peers. And it's a very tight knit little community, I guess, in optometry. So that's something it's not over it's not overly competitive and it's just very friendly, very supportive atmosphere. Um, and also obviously getting it done in three and a half years. Um, I was a direct, I was a high school leaver. So being able to be an optometrist when, uh, hopefully if all goes planned when you're 21, I think that's a pretty, a pretty cool um, thing to be able to achieve. The other thing I'll just add is that I think our placements add a lot to that as well. The fact that we do embed students into optometry practices, that you get a really good feel early on right from second year as to what it's like to be an optometrist and what it's like to actually work in the field and I think that that's quite unique uh, we make sure that there's plenty of clinical experience and real hands-on experience with patients so that you do really understand exactly what it's like to be an optometrist and I also think in saying that Heather as well the six-month placement I know for me that's something I'm so excited for and other degrees don't offer that so being able to actually um, dip your toes in the water with support is something that's really unique to the program too. Unfortunately that's all the time we have for today uh, so thank you very much to everybody that's been putting questions through the Q&A uh, portal. Uh, it's really good to see so many of you were interested in optometry here at Deakin. Um, so with that, we'd like to say thank you for uh, your attendance today and your questions, and we wish you well with the rest of your uh, journey here at uh, Virtual Open Day at Deakin. Okay.